Uh, I think that what we want, what I think that we really want is we want a world with data sovereignty. That's what I think that we, we really want to be headed toward. So if you want the ability to opt, if, if everybody's going to have the ability to opt in or opt out, and if everyone's going to have the ability who opts in to make sure their data is safe, secure, and owned by them, and only used in the way that they want it to be used, we have to start um, talking about what does that mean? What is sovereignty? So I would propose to you that this is what data sovereignty means. It means that all of your data is easily viewable and accessible via a series of mobile apps, just the same way that you have a mobile app on your phone for your health, um, like your health app or your Apple health, if you use that, or um, the same way that you, you know, track your workouts with wads like, you know, Wattify or whatever it is. I think that we should have an app or a series of apps where you can have this information. Um, you're able to share or not share this information with a click of a button. So if you'd like, um, uh, you have, say, your family history in an app, your family's health history. When you go to the office, to a, dent to a doctor's office, you can basically just send that information to a doctor. He can just see what he needs to see, nothing more. If he just needs to know if you have a history of cancer in your family, that's what will be sent, that kind of stuff. Um, Number three, you're compensated in the form of either equity, and this gets back to the stakeholder conversation that I think we should, that I think that should be a, a public discourse conversation. I think we all need to make stakeholders in these companies if we're going to share our data, or a one-time payment, or continuing payments based on the nature of the data. There's some data that you share that's like longitudinal, meaning that it only has value if the recipient can see the change in that value. Right. So in that situation, we would want you to share it over and over again and you'd be paid over and over again. Other data, there's a one time share, whatever is needed is extracted and then it basically is valueless. So we have to work on that model. Um, number four and potentially the most important is that your data is secure. Um, you can uh, keep it, use the greatest technology available to make sure that it's as, as unhackable as possible. And one thing that I've learned, I used to say the words unhackable a lot before I went to some of these data conferences and it's just not a real word that we should be using because everything is hackable. The US government figured out a way with Saudi Arabia to hack an air gapped computer that was 10 feet from a wall. Like we can hack anything. It's a matter of just, we have to be able to stay ahead of it. We have to keep pursuing technologies that, that keep you ahead of the game. Um, and then of course, data that provides you insights if you wish into how to optimize your health and how to be productive uh, in your time. Um, so this, this key point goes into like, look, let's not forget the fact that we develop technology to help us in our lives. We develop technology to save us time, to save us energy, to save us money, to give us more accesses to the things that we need. So we want it to kind of be submissive in a way. And then also it allows you to completely opt out of the system if you wish while keeping your system safe from hacks, third party sharing similar to a data, a data safety deposit box. Um, that's what I like to think of, you know, my, my DNA data, me personally, I have, there's no reason that I want anybody using that. I want to use it just to find out, like, I want some of the insights, but if it was up to me, I wouldn't even, I don't want that on anybody's server. So I'd like that to be put in a data safety deposit box. How do we do that?